Hello, good people! Welcome to our show! Hello, bad people! Welcome to our show! Hello, welcome! Today we are going to discuss more about my second love informant because I love reading books more than anything else as uh, I pay so much attention to read books but I love to listen audio podcast it's amazing format you can get a lot of great results with podcasts for example when I'm walking with my dogs exercising training driving whatever I do I can listen to audio podcast to learn something new uh, and I'm so excited to discuss a lot more about podcast with Max Brunstetter how are you Hey, thank you, Anatoly. This is uh, one of my favorite things to talk about and uh, just an awesome show you have. So excited to be a part of it. Yeah, a big pleasure. Yeah, I spent some time to learn about podcasts. I started my Ukrainian podcast. Then I switch attention to English podcast because we have great customers on this niche. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we chatted a little bit before the uh, podcast um, that I use this format for building great connections i i love to have these connections in my network i cooperate with many great experts we can help each other uh, to create cohesive content to create cohesive projects just to share you know <laughs> valuable insights on social media uh, max before we start just tell more about your self experience background and why you decided to choose this format yeah so i've had a very organic journey from podcast listener to podcast hosts to adding on uh, at the time what was for my family business a small podcast production service to now you know full-time full-fledged podcast production business uh, and I still love listening I still love hosting of course and still have producing to this day so it's been a really organic journey uh, I think the first podcast I ever heard was actually called Road Trippin and I'm from Cleveland Ohio a big Cleveland Cavs fan and it was the first time I had heard a podcast and it was uh, some players on the Cavs, Richard Jefferson, Channing Frye, uh, the sideline reporter, Ali Clifton, they were just interviewing other players and talking about things uh, really like uncensored in the NBA. And so you'd hear swear words, you'd hear them, you know, it felt like you were in there in the locker room or a hotel with them. And they were just talking about things and uh, talking about things going on in the league and with the team. And I just never, you know, had access to any sort of celebrity or sports figure or anything like that. And so right from the first time I listened, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like it literally feels like you're sitting there in the room with them or, or you're a fly on the wall for their conversation. So I thought it was really cool from the beginning. And then I got more and more into listening to business podcasts and was just floored to, oh my God, you can learn so much from listening. And on top of that, you can be driving or going for a run or working out or commuting or doing the dishes or a whole number of things while you're listening and while you're being entertained and educated. So there's just something about the medium um, that I've always loved. And so that's kind of on the listening side. And it was around the time I was joining my family business, we were looking for ways to market the family business. And that's where we came up with the idea for what is now Wild Business Growth Podcast, uh, which I've been doing since fall, uh, or actually August 2018 every week. And the point was to interview entrepreneurs uh, in other businesses and learn how they've grown their business and how they've, you know, what, what tactics and tricks and tools they've done, but also learn about their story and also learn about the personality to connect with them on a personal level. Um, and then pretty soon after I started doing that, I had people reach out to me like, whoa, you launch a podcast. That's so cool, which obviously there's lots more podcasts now, but still, um, it's always a cool thing when somebody launches and they were like, Hey, I would love to have a podcast. Can you help me out with my podcast or, or, I already have one. Can you help edit mine or help me market mine? And so that was like, huh, we can help out. You know, we could start a business service that way. And eventually that spun off into a full separate business, uh, which is now Max Podcasting, which I've been doing for uh, over three years now. So it's it's just an amazing journey. And I just I'm always energized by the medium and and the amazing entrepreneurs and, and marketers and business people I get to work with. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Max, uh, so you started podcast to help uh, your family business to grow. Then you switch attention to uh, sell the services. Am I right? <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's interesting because it was um, I mean, it was amazing learning experience because it did, you know, it, it, it made us some amazing connections for the business and was kind of focused on that. But it was 
from the get-go with Wild Business Growth Podcast, we weren't too in your face. You know, we weren't like hitting you over the head with like talking about our family business, Hippo Direct. We weren't hitting like talking about it every three minutes or four minutes. Like we kind of kept the business in the background. And the production service, while it started from the family business, it became more clear over time, especially uh, you know, right as uh, COVID lockdown happened, it became clear that really this, you know, it's a great service, it's a great solution, but it doesn't have the strongest fit with my family business, which is more traditional marketing and in the mailing list and email list space. So it made more sense to spin it out as a separate brand. And it's funny, like once you do that, uh, <laughs> got way more clients pretty quickly because people have a much better idea of what you're all about and what you're offering as opposed to being a number of things. So um, I still I'll always have love for the family business. Uh, I always love Hippo Direct and, and everything my family business has done, but um, it made made too much sense to to not spin it off as a separate business and start my own thing. Yeah, awesome. Love it. I love your story. And um, uh, I want to ask uh, the main question that I often get. Um, and uh, by the way, I ask this question, many podcasters, great podcasters, uh, uh, the biggest mistake or in podcasting and the most common reply not to start the podcast you know so <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest mistake because you can start facebook linkedin fast but uh, people still ignore podcasting it's not tough as you can register your facebook or tiktok uh, you can do it with podcast as well and max can you tell uh, for someone who is not familiar with this format how to start what to do first how to analyze your niche and uh, any tips or uh, if you have some checklist for uh, companies that wanna uh, grow uh, their marketing channels with podcasts. So what to do? <laughs> of course. So starting it is always one of the hardest parts. I mean, I think back to Wild Business Growth Podcast at the start, you know, we'd been talking about launching a podcast for months and months and months, and I had some good tips from people. It wasn't until I actually bought the microphone and started testing out the microphone. And I, and I had never spoken into the microphone before, and many new podcasters never have really as well. It wasn't until I did that that I kind of got over the hump and was like, all right, now once you start doing some test episodes, you get used to talking into a mic, which by the way is, it's not like you have to project your voice extra. When you're talking to the mic, you're just talking normally. The mic projects it for you. So that's kind of a common misconception. But once you are able to do that and like, you know, feel the mic in your hands as well as start testing, that's when it really starts to become more clear of like, all right, well, let's put some episodes together. Let's set a launch date. Let's get it out the door. So I think equipment is a really important piece. Uh, the most important piece of equipment is always your microphone. And there are some amazing options you can get for, I mean, less than $100 USD. Um, you can get them really, really low price, low price in a lot of places. A really good bang for your buck microphones. So microphones really important. Also make sure when you are planning out those first episodes, think about your podcast overall. You want to think about, you know, more on the brainstorming creative side, think about, well, what are the goals for starting your podcast? What do you want to achieve with it? And that will help formulate your content and sort of outline for those first few episodes. Some people like to start planning out the first 10 episodes even, just so you have a roadmap of like, all right, here's what we need to do to launch a few episodes at the start and then keep it going consistently after that. So equipment, uh, planning standpoint as far as the name and the content. And also it's important to think about format. So you can do like you have, uh, whether it's a live stream show or a podcast, you can do an interview format, which as you mentioned, is fantastic from a networking standpoint. I mean, it is the best networking tool I've ever seen. It connects with people literally all around the world, from places all around the world, and you know, sectors, industries that maybe you didn't even know existed before. You just never know what doors it can open, what it can, what it can do for your, your business or your personal brand. So there's the interview format, or you can do a solo podcast, which is really, really great if you want to, ha you know, establish more of that thought leadership in your space. Uh, you can do a mix of both. Some people almost will alternate every week, do a solo podcast, and then do an interview podcast, or just kind of mix it in whenever it's convenient. Or there's the narrative style of podcasting, which um, you hear a lot on like NPR or like true crime podcasts where maybe there's one main host, but they use lots of sound bites and music. And it's almost like you're listening to like a fiction or a drama 
uh, some something that's really really entertaining, but also on the back end, like the production side, it's it's way more involved. You know, it's like almost like a full movie or documentary production in order to do that. So there's pros and cons of each, but thinking through equipment, thinking through your goals, thinking through planning what's actually look like, and then the format uh, will really help you to to get off the ground. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And by the way, don't make excuses if you have no microphone. For example, I often listen to uh, Gary Vee. <laughs> he can yeah. uh, record uh, his podcast everywhere in conferences, uh, walking outside. And sound is not good, but value is great. So if you can provide such value, <laughs> why not? You can, you can do it. My microphone is great. Yeah, it's better to have it. But if you can't, it doesn't mean that you don't need to do it. You you can record even without microphone. <laughs> I mean, like great microphone. Uh, Max, yeah. yeah, I I wanna ask about uh, patience. You know, uh, when I started my first podcast, that was uh, in Ukrainian language, and uh, we couldn't get results even after a hundred episodes. Um, we recorded all these episodes, and um, uh, even in my team, I got a lot of questions. Why we did do it? Uh, we don't understand why we need to do it if we nobody cares. Uh, we have no uh, huge audience that we have on YouTube, that we have on our blog. But uh, then, miracle happened. You know, after a hundred episodes, and I learned this... Uh, trick from Mr. Beast when he said you need to film a hundred bad videos. Film a hundred bad videos, then you can learn. You can acquire experience to become much better, to improve a little bit step by step. So I think it's the same with uh, podcasting. You need to record a hundred bad episodes uh, to acquire experience to go ahead. Of course, quality is important. But if you have no experience, I have no idea how to create quality. So tell about patience, how to go ahead. Because according to data, 8%, uh, not 8%, I don't remember exactly the number, like most people give up uh, after eight episodes. They record eight episodes because they can't see results. They just leave it. Oh, this format doesn't work for me. I have no idea how to do it after eight episodes. I need a hundred episodes like Mr. Beast. So your tips about that. <laughs> yeah, patience is the word. I mean, podcasting is such a long term medium. Like you, if you are getting into podcasting and you want to actually see results from it and you want it to be, you know, a big part of your life, you have to go in knowing that we're going to do this for multiple years, you know, and at this point, maybe even decades, multiple decades. Um, and it's a very long-term thing and it might be a long time before you see results. I mean, no one, except maybe, you know, if you are someone who has a crazy, you know, out of this world audience, like Mr. Beast, or, or if you're an A-list celebrity, something like that, like vast majority of people aren't going to release a few episodes and then bam, it goes viral and you have, you know, thousands or millions of listeners. Like, no, it doesn't happen that way. What happens vast majority of the time, uh, for most people is that, you launch a podcast, there's kind of that initial excitement. Your initial audience is going to be mostly friends and family. And then you, you build out from there. So, you know, if you have content that's compelling, I mean, the best driver of growth of podcasts is like any other form of me media, like any, like people's favorite Netflix shows or people's favorite, uh, you know, whatever they like, fa people's favorite movies. It all spreads through word of mouth. It all spreads through people telling each other. So you start with your friends and family, and if it's good enough, they'll share it with their you know, friends and family, which might be some of the same friends and family. And eventually you do expand to people that are maybe you're connected with online or maybe you know someone introduced it to them that you don't even know about each other before, but they like the podcast. And that's the kind of thing that happens a lot over time. And even throughout that timing, your friends and family, those who are loyal to you, will still be, you know, part of your audience. Still be part of the podcast. You need to keep them in mind, keep them, uh, kind of in in your heart as you're, as you are creating content. But you just have to go into it knowing that is a long form thing, and there are m m like tons and tons, you know, hundreds of thousands of case studies out there of podcasts that didn't get much traction in the early days, but if you keep doing it year after year and you keep improving the quality of the content, you keep having you know awesome guests, you keep creating stuff with your audience in mind, you are eventually able to get to a bigger audience. It's just, it's just a long-term thing. So you have to, <laughs> it goes back to love as well. You have to really love what you're doing and you really have to do it for the right reasons. Yeah, nice, valuable. I, I couldn't agree more and uh, without 
love without passion, uh, it's tough to go ahead because you can survive on this. You can suffer even. Uh, I remember a great book when uh, an author uh, shared insights when uh, she got email from other book author and he asked for help because nobody uh, buys his books and he's suffering a lot. Uh, and she replied to him, leave it. It's not for you. If you suffer, why you do? Why you write? Why you decided that writing is for you? Uh, you, uh, you need to have patience. And Mr. Beast didn't give up because he loves uh, to film videos. Uh, he got thousand subscribers after 18 months. So he filmed a lot of content. Nobody cared. Like uh, thousand subscribers are almost nothing. But today, everyone knows Mr. B, so patience is key of the process, and you need to love. If you don't enjoy this format, leave it. Uh, Stephen King, uh, Seth Godin, they, they don't have podcasts. <laughs> they don't need it. They like to write. So uh, if your strong side is writing, do it. If you like filming, film. If you like recording, yeah, just do it. Uh, and I don't know how to become an Instagram star overnight. It takes time. I don't know how to win in ASIO uh, for uh, for a few months. It takes time. Podcasting is on the same boat. If you love, you can overwork others. You can bring more value uh, with experience. And Max, uh, let's talk about finding the right format. For example, uh, I think many uh, new podcasters uh, learn from Joe Rogan or other popular podcasters, but it doesn't mean that you need to copy, replicate uh, such formats to invite great experts uh, to speak with them. You, you can uh, be solo. Uh, you can uh, invite uh, experts. So tell how to find this format for a specific podcast. Yeah, formats really, really important thing to figure out over on. It's kind of funny because um, for some podcasters, they'll stay with the same format throughout the entire time. So like for Wild Business Growth Podcast, I, I interview a new entrepreneur every single episode. So like that, I'm super stuck to that, except for like the the milestone episodes where we do kind of like a mix of best does and bloopers and stuff like that. But there are some podcasts that start out solo and then realize that they want to add guests or start out with guests and then realize they can mix in some solo episodes as well. So, so there's benefits of each. I think it comes down to the goals with the podcast and also... Uh, your capabilities, uh, how much time you have to, and are willing to commit to the podcast. Let's talk about scheduling. So as you've seen, I mean, you, you have, you have an awesome process for this that keeps it super simple, but whenever you are doing a podcast with guests, you're not just dependent on your schedule anymore. You're dependent on your schedule and you're dependent on the guest schedule. And especially if you're interviewing people from all around the world, that could be a wide range of time zones. That could be, uh, you know, there's only so many hours of the day that even works for you and the guest potentially. So it becomes trickier when you do have guests uh, from a scheduling standpoint compared to when you have a solo podcast and then you can just theoretically record whenever you want to. Now, the trade-off is, it is much easier once you hit record to have a conversation and, you know, pass an hour by when you are having a conversation with the guest and speaking to somebody else, as opposed to trying to put together like a one hour soliloquy of something on your own. And so it's much easier once you actually get into it to do an interview. Now, of course, there's an art of interviewing as well. Like you, you can't be a slouch about it, but solo podcasts, if you're going for like a really frequent, like daily like you do or, or super frequent podcasts then solo in theory could be more feasible but there's also <laughs> other benefits in interviewing is interview shows are amazing from a networking standpoint as you've seen um and then solo shows are awesome from a thought leadership uh that you've seen so like if you have a if you're writing and launching a book for example Solo would work great from that regard of being able to expand on some of those lessons that you talk about in the book. That makes great for a solo podcast, but also <laughs> certainly doesn't hurt. And it's actually an amazing strategy to, you know, carve out a hundred podcasts that you want to go on as a guest as well and be future about those things. So it can work in multiple ways. And then the other one we mentioned before, as far as like narrative, like if you want to get really, really creative and kind of turn it into a drama, almost like an audio uh, or video documentary feel to it. 
um, narrative. There are tons of people out there that really like that content. It's just, it is so much work on the production side to add in sound bites and to add in different clips and also to make sure you have like the proper licensing for all that, uh, licensing the music, licensing any, you know, like press conferences or something that's out there like that. So um, it's an awesome endeavor if you can do it and it fits with your style that you're going for. But also, uh, you know, for many business owners, like it makes way more sense to do an interview podcast or a solo podcast. So it, it, it all goes back to your goals, but there's lots of perks of each. Yeah, well, you know. uh, Max, you started your podcast to market uh, your family business. And I want to ask about call to action. Uh, can mm -hmm. you tell how to submit this call to action because I know some companies that have podcasts but can't sell with the podcast. Uh, it's not like to click the link. You need to uh, use your voice you now to incentivize someone to uh, use some product. So tell your tips how to do it, right? <laughs> right. And, and I think with everything uh, that's tied to ads or call to action, you have to keep your audience top of mind. So I'm, I'm sure you've listened to them. Uh, I hear them all the time. It, it blows my mind that some of the biggest podcasts out there, of course, because they want to make money off of it, are just filled with ads. I mean, some of the the top shows, like you, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you mentioned Rogan earlier, like one of my favorites, uh, one of my all time favorite shows is the Tim Ferriss show. And some of the content in those shows is amazing, but you literally have to skip like five to eight minutes at the start <laughs> unless you want to hear all those commercials to even get there. So, you know, it is nice as a as a listener that you can skip that. It's like totally on demand. You can skip forward to things. However, when you're thinking about your show, like, do you want to be a show that people go to because they know is awesome stories? Or do you want to start to get the reputation of, oh, my God, we have to like samurai sword through so many minutes of ads uh, to get there. Now the so my strategy with ads has always been to be like more in the background with it and that maybe put like a mid roll ad if you're advertising something or if you can tie it back to your business in the middle of the episode and then have a call to action at the end where you can say, you know, here's my web. So for me, it's like learn more about podcast production and max podcast. And I, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> I usually okay. stumble too. No, but you can learn more about podcast production at maxpodcasting.com. Sign up for podcasting to the Max Newsletter at maxpodcasting.com slash newsletter. Um, and then, you know, of course, follow the podcast as well on your favorite pl platforms. But you want you want to keep it as simple as possible. You want you don't want to throw like 10 things their way at the end of it. So for call to action, make sure it's something that if someone's listening to it or watching it, like it's easy for them to internalize and then go do that action. Yes, it's much more difficult than if somebody just like sees a post on social media and then clicks something and it takes them to the page. It's a little bit different than that. So that's like one of the challenges with podcasting. But if you're consistent with your call to action in each episode, as well as whatever you're advertising, then over time, you know, your, your, your audience will internalize it. So it can be very effective. You just don't want to be too complicated with what you're saying, because as I mentioned before, you might be, your audience might be working or doing the dishes, making dinner, might be doing something totally different while they're consuming your content. So it can't be too tricky of a call to action. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask about uh, creating non-boring podcast. Uh, and um, let me share a short story. Uh, once I spoke with Jim Edwards. He worked in Business Insider for uh, 10 years. He started on this company from scratch. Then company was sold for $500 million. Great success. He wrote a book. Uh, say thank you for uh, anyone great book uh, and what he told me that success of business insider depends on creating non-boring content so business insider found the way how to create content for b2b that not boring uh, and if i take any book from jack london uh, i don't know hemingway i can read them and forget about sleep water meal anything because i can live on this book if we speak about business books most of them are boring you know you can read them and um, if you have problems with sleep you can read before bed uh, before sleep and you can sleep well forget anything from this book uh, we have uh, short attention most people uh, bounce fast uh, it doesn't matter what kind of content video content articles people bounce fast if it's 
boring and we don't know if it's valuable or not if it's boring people just leave it and and never regret never get back so tell your tips how to create non-boring podcast for b2b that's a great story and I, i'm surprised so you, you don't like boring stuff no <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> no no no, no. no it, it, it is always that is as more and more podcasts are launched I think there's more and more boring podcasts. And so there's more and more of an opportunity for you to stand out with exceptional and entertaining and fascinating content. One of my favorite ways to do this is actually, you, know, you talk about attention span and like how quick people will bounce off of podcasts. Um, it's it's totally true. And, and I think that's something that like ties back to, like we're seeing how like TikTok is so popular now. It's like people watch like three second videos at a time and move on or get bored in a three second video. It's crazy. So it's like, it becomes more of a challenge with podcasts to get people to continue listening and listening throughout the episode. My favorite way to make it exciting right from the start, from like the very first, first seconds of the episode is you can do, you can pull a little teaser from somewhere in the episode. That's like a fun quote and put it up, t up front. So that's something I always do with wild business growth podcast. And, and of course I still edit my podcast to this day. And so I make little notes, uh, you know, on my note sheet as I'm going through the episode and I'll make little notes of, Ooh, this would be a really good intro teaser. And then afterwards you can pull it out and put it at the start. So that's a way to, to pique people's interest right from the start, because you can have a really fun teaser. Uh, and I know you do something like that as well. Um, you can do a really fun teaser from the guest. So that's a fun way at the start. And then, after that, you know, maybe you have your intro music and it's important to have fun music as well and music that fits the vibes of the podcast. And then after that, if you're recording a separate intro for your podcast, keep that like a minute or less. Uh, don't go too much longer beyond that because <laughs> kind of like we talked about with uh, the ads in some of those top podcasts, uh, if it's so long before you even get to the meet, like before you even get to the interview, then people are going to bail. And if they know that they have to wait, you know, minutes on minutes before they get to actually, you know, the guess who they came there to listen to or they, the insights they came there to listen to every time, then people are going to bail. They're going to bounce, as you said. Uh, and the other way to, 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 to put a bow on this, like, kind of intro segment part of uh, being non-boring is to start with a really engaging story. So you can... You can um, as, as many podcasts do, and as we started on this one, you can start with kind of talking about the guest background or the guest bio, and it is important to say some of those things. But another option you can do is also if you find, if you're going through their LinkedIn or if you hear them on other podcasts, like if you hear a little fun fact about them that's like really interesting and you'd love to dive into, you can just start by diving into that. Um, like I interviewed somebody uh, right before this recording, <laughs> you know, at the time of this recording who was a, a ski ambassador for the brand, the North face. And I'm like, Oh my God, like that's, that's really cool. Like, how did you get into that? Like, how did you get into skiing? And so like, um, it's, it, it's a more specific way to dive into something really interesting. And then of course, you know, before too long, you can get into the main part, the, the meat of whatever their specialty is, whatever their expertise is. But those are, I mean, that's like four ways right there to, to keep engagement right from the start. And then of course it's important to, to have a really compelling and engaging interview throughout it. But it, the start is super important. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Love it. Love it. Um, uh, I will not speak more about Gary V. Um, mm, and yeah. I, I, I don't think he's recording podcasts uh, because uh, he creates numerous formats. Uh, and he mentioned um, that he doesn't uh, write books. He is talking and <laughs> recording. Then uh, editors can uh, create books from uh, his talking. So, uh, and, uh, so basically, he uh, can speak to create various formats video formats uh, podcasts uh, blog posts and his team can help to repurpose content for different channels um, i want to ask you how to uh, repurpose content how to create uh, many different formats to satisfy different audience on different channels if i am going to start my podcast but i have um, no i'm so busy many things to do for me it's tough to find time for podcasts but i keep doing them because i can build my audience i have my priorities i like to speak uh, with experts like you to learn from them 
but I I have only 24 hours a day. So tell how to repurpose content to win more customers. Yeah, it sure be nice if we had at least 25 or 26 hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just forget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we always need more. Time, time is so valuable. But uh, And shout out Gary Vee. I, I was very fortunate in, in my first job out of college that we actually worked with, um, you know, we partnered on some of our brands with Vayner Media. So I actually got to meet Gary a couple of times in person. And Ooh. as you might imagine, meeting him in person is, he just has the best like natural like energy and like, yeah. you know, like he'll, he'll light a fire under you, uh, in, 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 in any meeting. So that was really, really cool. Um, he takes a very interesting approach with his podcast, as you said, and I totally agree. Like he's, he, you know, he does interview, you know, some A-list people and celebrities and business leaders, and he does it, you know, for YouTube and for his podcast, but also like, you know, he releases stuff for his podcast every day. He is like the, the king of repurposing content. And they'll take any sort of long form content, whether that be YouTube or a podcast interview and break it down into small parts that he posts on all social media that he posts on his podcast. Uh, I actually have a client shout out Mark Freeman, who uh, interviewed Gary for his show, the marketing playbook. And then, you know, before too long after we look at Gary V's podcast and Gary V had repurposed the interview on Mark's show into an episode on Gary's show, um, which is totally cool. Like, I, 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 that's awesome. I'm sure Mark is super thrilled about it. Like, that's super exciting. So repurposing is a phenomenal opportunity for podcasters out there. I mean, I'm somebody who needs to get way better at it. Like, I, I, I reshare old episodes of the Wild Business Growth Podcast, you know, on Instagram and, uh, and Twitter as like throwback Thursdays sometimes, or if like something's relevant. But and now at the time of this recording, like there's a back catalog of 265 episodes that probably vast majority of people like had no idea I interviewed, you know, X person at X time or like, wow, that was a really cool interview. And it was years ago. And like people who would be interested in it now didn't know about it back then. So repurposing is you know you have to be strategic with it but whether you're re you can re-release certain episodes or certain types of content uh, my clients Anne and april do this thing called quick hits where they take some of their longer form episodes over the past few years and they release them uh, you know every thursday instead of their normal tuesday and it's like more of like a 10 to 15 minute episode and it's just like a couple main points from each episode and sometimes depending on the the person like that might be exactly what the listener needs that week. And it's a really good point that's remained evergreen. So I think when you have a long form podcast or show anything like that, start thinking about over time what you can do to repurpose some of those main points or almost best of minutes. Maybe it can be through your podcast episode, or maybe you can turn it into a blog post. Maybe you can turn it into, I mean, there's so many amazing posts that you can do on social media that you can pull out from each episode there. So be, 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 have that mindset of trying to find content like that. And then if you do have the budget or the luxury to, to hire somebody or hire a freelancer or if someone on your team can go through and actually, you know, do that fine work of, you know, identifying the timestamps and the, and the parts from each episode to repurpose, then that makes it way easier in terms of doing that at scale. But not not everybody can do that. But if you can do that, of course, it's a, it's a great luxury. But if not, there's still things that you can do to repurpose some of your amazing content. Yeah, nice. Well, I, I love your points. Uh, uh, I agree. You need to have someone who can help with that. Because I remember in 2020, I decided to grow my social media. Uh, and uh, I posted content on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube. Then... I got uh, even repurposing content, I can't win. Uh, it's almost impossible to uh, be successful everywhere. Even Gary Vee, he started on Twitter. He started on Twitter, then he switched attention to YouTube, then he switched attention to Facebook. And when he got a team, he can repurpose content because he has a team who can help him to repurpose this content. But if you have two hands like me, you know, uh, it's not enough. And um, uh, I decided to stop and switch attention to LinkedIn, just LinkedIn alone. And uh, in this social media, I grew my audience. Uh, I grew audience, uh, business oriented people that I need for my business. It's more important for me. Um, uh, and uh, for example, when I try to satisfy all possible 
social media platforms. I got like five, 10 followers a day, a few hundred views. Then on LinkedIn alone, I got like 500 followers a day, uh, plus 10,000 views, uh, and I got it. It's better to focus. So I, I agree. It's important to focus, to pay attention where you have strong side. When you have team, when you can extend, like Charlie D'Amelia, she grew on TikTok, then she hired a team to grow everywhere. YouTube, Instagram, it's a great point. Just do uh, become the best in one place. Then you can think about other places. So yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, that, that's, you stumbled onto something that um, is one of my favorite things that um, Joe Polizzi, the godfather of content marketing, and one of his top things, kind of like the roadmap for becoming a successful content entrepreneur is that start producing content and like pick one place to produce content. So maybe that, I mean, he started Content Marketing Institute with the blog. <laughs> he jokes that that was the go-to market strategy was starting a blog. <laughs> it's a bit harder with the blog these days, but you can do it. But whether that be a blog or a podcast, or if there's one social media platform they're using, or a newsletter, like I'm a huge fan of newsletters. Pick one medium and post consistent, helpful, insightful, entertaining content, do it consistently, build your audience there over time, which of course is easier said than done. And then once you do that, there's a number of ways to monetize with their, your audience. There's a number of ways to d diversify and share some of that content or other content on different social media platforms as well. But it all starts with ones and keeping the focus on one and, and it all ties back to podcasting because like that's been my strategy since I got into podcasting uh, five, over five years ago now has been like the podcast is my main platform. And yes, I am very active on social media and share a lot about uh, on social media uh, about podcasting tips and, and the wild business growth in the wild business growth podcast and varying things. But it all starts with the podcast and then you can share out stuff from there and any sort of long form content like this. Uh, there's so much amazing content again that you can that you can share from it. So um, it, when you are picking pillar content, a podcast or a YouTube show is a is a fantastic way to go about. Nice, nice, uh, Max. I wanna ask about your podcast. Uh, yeah, and you know I'm so picky to choose a podcast that I follow. Let me explain why because. I have 24 hours a day uh, and many other things to do. <laughs> so I can listen to all great podcasts. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm picking. I can choose the best podcast that can bring more value to me. So that is why I listen to Gary Vee, uh, because he can encourage me to work hard, to make actions. Uh, I can listen to many other great episodes, uh, podcasters, but Give me a strong reason to subscribe to your podcast and to my audience as well. Why you're better? How? What kind of value can you bring to us? And uh, how you stand out from the rest? Wild entrepreneurs, wild growth every Wednesday morning. So got the alliteration there with all the W's. But uh, I am endlessly fascinated by entrepreneurs like yourself and how they went from that aha moment to a business and then a successful business and they're fascinating stories and then you on top of that you get tips that you can tie back to your business now where my show differentiates from a lot of entrepreneurship shows out there like gary v's and i love gary is that i make a big emphasis on personality as well and by that i mean myself like i <laughs> love dad jokes. I love puns. I love like corny jokes. I love alliteration segues like that. Like that is a huge part of the show to work it in. And, and often the guests are the same way as well. So not only are you going to get entrepreneurship tips from really creative out of the box stories, you're also going to be entertained and laugh and smile and be, be inspired, but also have some really creative uh, and fun ways to approach business. So that's the differentiator there is that it's not just entrepreneurs it's it's wild entrepreneurs and we get a little bit wild and wacky and dive into pet peeves and quirks and weird talents and uh you'll you'll probably roll your eyes when listening because of my sense of humor but uh, <laughs> that's the only way i know 
<laughs> nice thank you thank you so i'm going to follow you uh, <laughs> i'm going to it. subscribe so guys you need to do it as well just subscribe thank and, you uh, wild business growth podcast people people forget to hit that follow button these days you you would be surprised how many i'm sure for your show as well how many how many people listen all the time but it means a lot to the podcast host when you do actually hit that follow button on your favorite platform yeah yeah totally uh max i, I found in my company that we get great results with customers who understand what we do so uh, for example, if we help with SEO, we need to uh, that customers should understand why we need to create high quality content, why it's important to think about traffic value than getting more traffic, many different insights. So if customers don't, I tell them, take my course, learn from YouTube, learn on Google, it doesn't matter, just learn, get the basic, how it works, then we can cooperate. Um, I also have students in my network who are looking for ways to learn something from scratch to become an expert. Uh, so I want to ask you, if you started today from scratch without any experience, knowledge, skills, it's your first day in podcasting. You know about Tim Ferry, you know about other great podcasters, but you never uh, recorded any episodes. What will you do if you started from scratch? Oh, that's a phenomenal question and, and it's pretty clear for me and and i think so many podcasters in the space you hear the term community a lot and i think if you produce something if you create something long enough you you will have some sort of a community around your podcast like you're you're building your audience there but there's some amazing stories including people i've interviewed and, and been fortunate to meet especially at podcast movement conference of amazing podcasters where something about their story, their personality, and something about the actual podcast and what they talk about each week in each episode is so compelling. And it's like, so, you know, gets people eating popcorn and so excited to tune into every week that there's actually people in their audience, like their listeners have created like Facebook groups around their show and like, like, like fan led groups around their show. And I think that's like a dream for a lot of podcasters, like to have something that's that, you know, sensational and, and spectacular uh, to throw in more alliteration <laughs> that your listeners will tune in and not just tune in, but be really engaged with the podcast and talk about podcast ideas or talk about the latest episodes, things like that. So if I was starting over and I've done this in certain episodes, but I think I would do it more often from the start is to see what you can do to get your, your listeners and your viewers more involved in the show. So maybe that is like for, like if I have a notable guest coming on, for example, or like a guest in a really unique, cool area. Um, like I, I, I had a guest who has been to every country in the world. And the f kicker is they did it without a single flight. So like that's something that's like really, really interesting. So like I, I posted on social media and asked – like, what would you ask somebody who's been to every country in the world? Like, what would you, you know, like there, there, it's endless questions there. And then when you actually go to record the podcast and, and interview the guest, you can incorporate those listener or viewer questions into it. And all of a sudden your, your audience, your community is, is part of the show and also helping you <laughs> create that content as well. So I would be way more intentional with that from the start and also be way more intentional about creating uh, a two-way communication and it's easier said than done but I think from the start with podcasting you realize that um, you know there's there's kind of like a natural organic growth that comes with it often if you are putting out great content but also after a while it can feel like like you're just speaking one way and you don't hear it from your listeners nearly as much as you think you would or um, nearly as much as like you think warrants it and and that's okay and as you mentioned, there's so many podcasts out there and people, everyone's life is so busy. Like people aren't going to spend every day or every week being like, oh, I love you podcast hosts. Like, thanks for doing that episode. And I'm tongue in cheek, obviously. Uh -huh. But there are ways that you can open that communication and be more active about asking for listener feedback or, or asking your listeners what guests or what topics they'd like to see on your show. So social media is a fantastic way for that. Uh, newsletter is a fantastic way for that. Um, that's another answer is like, so I started the newsletter 
really towards the end of last year. And I would have started the newsletter <laughs> when I launched the podcast, if I could go back in time. I actually would have started at like age one if I could do that. <laughs> but um, yeah. establishing that two-way communication is, is a really important way because as you grow and as you build your community, your community will help you kind of boost your show to the next level and, and be advocates for your show. And so whatever you can do to be more intentional about that from the beginning, I think is a a really cool thing that can help differentiate podcasts and kind of boost them to that quote, quote, next level. Yeah. Yeah. If, uh, it's important to build community and it's important, uh, to retain your community with new valuable insights and uh, it's the best marketing channel. Uh, if you have a loyal audience, uh, they can share your podcast with others. You can use different channels, but if your audience doesn't recommend, I'm not sure you can win on this game. <laughs> and Max, I have my final question uh, about the future. I want to ask you, take your crystal ball and let us know what kind of future will be in podcasting industry, because many things are coming. Augmented reality will come soon from Apple. We will see this headset. Uh, I think virtual reality can come. We have AI today. So this world is quickly changing. Uh, field so tell your forecast about podcasting industry you didn't tell me i needed to 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 pack the crystal ball for this here we go yeah (laughs) yeah no it's it's really fun thing to think about um and i i think as just kind of a guardrail overall (laughs) think about how often things change and how often things have all the hype in the world and then kind of die down so for example remember clubhouse I mean, Clubhouse is still, it's still there. I, I haven't been on it in a long, long time. But when Clubhouse came around and made it big, big, everything, kind of like how AI is now, but how everybody wants to talk about Clubhouse. People were like, is this the death of podcasting? Like, is Clubhouse going to take over podcasting? And clearly, it's like, no. I mean, the, the benefit, like, the, still my favorite part of podcasting is the fact that you can be doing something else while you listen to whatever you want, whenever you want, you know, it's on demand. It is, you know, especially the audio side of things, even if you have video on the background, you can be cooking, cleaning, commuting, uh, even working if it's more of like a mundane or tedious task to it and still learn and still be entertained. So like that main part of podcasting, I think is like, it's, it's gold for podcasting and that will always be the strongest staple of podcasting. If you look forward, and especially over the past couple of years, the big thing everybody wants to talk about with podcasting is the rise of video. And it also blurs the lines of like, well, is it a video podcast or a a video show? And much of this is driven by the fact that YouTube is just so popular in the top search engine. And there's, you know, it's, it's an amazing, you know, some people go to YouTube for everything. So it's a fantastic place for, for consuming podcasts and it's growing and growing in terms of the capabilities they're adding for podcasters. So I think long-term, I think video is only going to continue to rise. And I think that, you know, in the, I guess not too distant future, I don't know, I can't put a timeline on it, but at some point, it will be way more common to have a podcast that's video and audio than just an audio podcast where it was kind of swapped at the start just because I'm somebody who always loves to listen. Like I'm a listen first person, but there's a lot of people out there as well that are watch first person. And if there's a video option, they'll always choose that option as opposed to an audio option. And then there's some people that will do both depending on their circumstance. So there's always going to be room for audio and video and podcasting. And then in terms of, VR and like AI, almost like synthetic podcast, if you will, things like that. Like, I think a lot of those areas are going to be pretty cool, but they're also like, it completely changes the the barriers to entry with podcasting. Like my favorite parts for audio podcasting, and it's, it's getting more reasonable for video podcasting as well, is that it's very low barriers to entry. You know, spend a few hundred bucks on a microphone or like buy a, buy like a starter camera to get ready. Uh, make sure you have a, some sort of quiet space to record like that. Like you can do that without breaking the bank. And then in theory, you can do that and be consistent and get your show out consistently. Mm-hmm. Once you start getting into these newer technologies like VR or if like something's more AI generated, like it becomes much more difficult to do. 
it can be, and it can be much more costly. And so it's going to come down to, is it worth the investment on the back end to do something like crazy and radical from that standpoint? If the end listening or end viewing experience isn't that different or isn't more fun or isn't more entertaining for the guests. So it'll be really interesting to keep an eye on parts, but I think audio and video will continue to be the staple. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Max, it's a big pleasure to get on my show to learn from you. I'm going to listen to your podcast. Uh, tell the best way how to keep learning from you, how to reach out to you. Thank you so much. Anatoly. I, I really appreciate it. And, um, the, podcast that you mentioned is called wild business growth podcast so if you search that uh, on any of the podcast platforms that will come up and the you know you could you could there's a number of places we're approaching 300 episodes now so there's a number of places to start but i do do you know every 100 episodes i do a milestone episode that has best ofs and bloopers so if you listen to the episode 100 or episode 200 specials that's a good place to start uh i know they're longer but you can skip around a lot of really fun guests there and and guess you would recognize that you might be like wait max interviewed so who crazy <laughs> but the yeah. starting place for everything me and podcast related is maxpodcasting.com so yes there's a pun in that name i couldn't resist you know i'm max i'm corny but maxpodcasting.com <laughs> you can find the more info about the podcast there you can find the recent episodes um and actually if you go to maxpodcasting.com slash newsletter that's where you can sign up for podcasting to the max where it, which is my newsletter every thursday short and sweet and it combines entrepreneurship tips, podcasting tips, and a a, a very bad, no good, awful pun uh, in every email. So <laughs> you could do that, maxpodcasting.com slash newsletter. Uh, you know, I, I like how you share all these benefits. <laughs> you know, you, you <laughs> want me, I think you can win uh, all uh, listeners uh, to this podcast. So they will listen to you. Uh, and uh, guys, you can find all the links in the description below. Uh, listen us on Apple, Google, Spotify. Thanks again for your time, Max. It's a big pleasure. So valuable, so fun. So I'm going to listen to learn more about podcasting, how to how to spend more time with that, how to get more results with that, and recommend to anyone to follow Max uh, on uh, your live podcasting platforms, uh, to subscribe to his newsletter. And you need to understand, if you learn something, you need to practice. Without practice, nothing works. So if you listen to podcasts and do nothing, you get nothing. But if you learn what uh, valuable insights and implement, then results will come. Okay, guys, love you. See you.